Welcome back to the second hour of uh, Tip Today. Now, as part of Culture Night, some very novel installations will be popping up in Clonmel and uh, Carrick and Shore. This one that we're going to talk about, Large Shoes. And to exp explain more, and joined in the studio by LIT lecturer and a regular Tip Today contributor, Bernie Goldback, and a second year creative media student, Claire Bentley. You're both very, very welcome indeed. Uh, can I go to you first, Bernie? Can you explain this to me? Well, it's a culture night initiative. So we have a lecturer, Marie Walsh, who is, uh, lives in Carrick, and she's brought the tutor people there along with um, our students in the campus here in Clonmel together to just share an experience about shoes. You know, walk a mile in my shoes. What are your shoes like? Or what kind of experience do you want to share? There's an inside story for all shoes. Like it's like the Jahari window stuff you may not want to share. And some of those stories are coming out with uh, folks sharing shoes that they've made part of installations by decorating them or putting them in place. The head of LIT actually drove down here to give away some of the shoes about uh, three weeks ago. So his shoes are going to be part of one of these pop-up installations that are scattered between Jervis Place and the LIT Clonmel campus mm -hmm. on the Ring Road uh, tomorrow, two o'clock, Friday. So the shoes will be toe to heel. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that it? Well, it's, they're artistically placed. They could okay. be toe to heel. They, they, they aren't going to stretch a mile. Right. <laughs> so we don't have a mile's worth of shoes. Well, that'd be interesting. We have, a, I'd say, several dozen shoes. They're, they belong to people who painted them or made them part of these installations. And then there's these large cutouts that are approximately a meter and a half tall, look like shoes. And there's words and articles and attached things attached to them as well. So if you're walking between uh, Jervis Place that's by the sub -half. Right, so various installations al along mm -hmm. the way. Claire, what about your input into this? What are, what are you doing? Um, basically, we're trying to get people onto social media to use the hashtag in my shoes. Mm. So for people who might not want to like go along to the event or ever and say their stories to people, it's they can go onto Instagram or Twitter and they can post their their story along with a picture of their shoes or whatever. And then they can connect with other people who are doing the same. All right. Okay. And already, are you getting a, a, a big interest in this? Yeah. Before we came here, I actually checked uh, Twitter and Instagram. And there's a lot of uh, people using the hashtag, not just from this year, but from the last two years. So mm. it's, it's I've been a reoccurring thing for a few years that a lot of people have taken interest in. No, no, it's very interesting. That whole notion of walking in somebody else's. Uh, shoes has been spoken of over the years but you I, I was looking at you on YouTube this morning Bernie and that notion that we our, our emotions while we're in our shoes mm. you spoke even of, of anger for example yeah. my, my angry shoes yeah no we got some there's students now in, in Morlish that are participating and yeah there's a lot of uh, anger with uh, poor frustrating performances on the pitch and then having to lace up their own shoes to go into the pub and hear people berate them about how terrible game they have or what team they're playing for. So, no, anger comes through. And then there's that great session where uh, in the locker room, David Beckham proudly showed the scar above his eyebrow when Alex Ferguson threw spiked heel shoes at him, you know? So that's, you know, there's stories about it. And in Mental Health Ireland, there's this constant theme every year about, like, you take, you walk a mile in my shoes and see what it's like. A UCD's got a big event mid-October where you're welcome to walk 5,000 steps and donate money to aware.ie. So it's a good recurring, it's a pretty, it's a non-trolled topic. Most people don't jump on it and make fun of it because mm. it, it has, it resonates. Now, as Claire's mentioning, we've had people actually use another form of social media, an audio form, and they're, they're calling in to an app from different parts of the world to share stories. And I think that's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Tell us about that it. app, because that app is very interesting. Yeah, as well, isn't well it? The, there's a variety of ways of doing it. So you can share your story electronically a lot of ways. The, the image is kind of the simplest way. But the app that we've stumbled upon is called anchor.fm, anchor. I like the ship, a ship's anchor, mm. and uh, it's free iOS or Android, and if you look for the all one word in my shoes, you'd find people talking about this. So what's happened is we, we've set up a, an account, a free account called Pen and Pixel, which is a word that we use to, about our annual exhibition here in Clonmel with the campus. And people are calling into the app. This is an opp opportunity. You can make it your own phrase, your own concept, or you can call in, call in and leave it away, leave in stories. Or on their own accounts, they're using the word shoes, and we're finding these stories. So we have a, a designer in London who's uh, responsible for 
creatively making your home look nicer, talking about her shoes from age six on. So you can imagine some women have a lot of shoes, and mm -hmm. a lot of memories. Um, we have a guy who is distressed in California, remembers as a seven-year-old, his parents did not get him Adidas, they did not get him Nike, got him JC Penny, and forever he was the JC Penny boy when it came to pickup games. So little things like that are coming out uh, from young students Isn't as well as mid -career yeah. professionals. I, I was about to pick up on that with, with Claire, the notion of the importance of shoes to women. Uh, some of the most difficult um, things that you could possibly wear. I see some of you in, the, in these impossibly high heels and stuff like that. Is that reflected in any way, um, the whole fashion thing? Uh, um, well, yeah, because you can't, you know, you have to... I think shoes are the most important part of an outfit and that's why... Are they? Yeah. That's why there's a lot of stories from the women who post in that their stories are about heels. Mm. And how, like, all of their angry stories are reflected on because of the fact that they were wearing these incredibly high heels at times mm. when it was inconvenient to right. do that. And what, they're angry about the fact that they're forced into wearing them in some way? I mean, it? it's kind of a social standard yeah. that women wear heels at certain events. But, I mean, they're not nice to walk in yeah. at any, any height at all. It's not nice to walk in them, especially for, you know, more than 20 minutes or whatever. Right. Well, here's the logical response to that is don't wear them then. Yeah. <laughs> you think it would be that easy. Yeah, but it's not, is it? <laughs> no. And is that a kind of a social push on, on, on wearing that? Is that the... Because it's it's acceptable form of fashion, is that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you can't really show up in, like, an office outfit and then, like, you know, right. Adidas right. shoes. It's kind of interesting. And, and the more... The anger comes from this, of course, mm. as well, doesn't it? Yeah. For, well, I think frustrations, perhaps. Frustration, the better... So. The better yeah. uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's certainly every listener here uh, on the radio today knows can always tell someone about like even the plowing stuff you know people are muck up you know, mucked up you know, can't get there can't walk their friend slipping on the way in you know yes, it's like yes. the shoe did it to them and wellies the amount yeah, of yeah. mentions that yeah. wellies get is incredible yeah, you yeah, know yeah. It, uh, wellies represented in this in any way in walking uh, they should be they like, should i mean be. like one of the high points of my cultural experience in ireland is the wellie race in castle Comer every year <laughs> yes, you yeah, know yeah. so i mean wellies are a thing and, and um we've grown plants and in the wellies in our back garden you know, the kids' old wellies just hang them, tack them to the fence. Mm. Plants grow well in them. Interesting. <laughs> I bow to your superior knowledge of, of that. I remember the poet, uh, Pat Inglesby, um, he, he used to write um, very, very strange poetry indeed, but sometimes he would take the part, for instance, if he wrote a, a story uh, or a poem involving a chair, he would become the chair, and yeah. he'd be frightened at the notion that some bigger person was going to come and sit on him. I'm just wondering, <laughs> did anybody write... Or, or install or do an installation on behalf of the shoe itself? You know, that's interesting. I'll have to come to the event and see how that's evolved because I have not seen what the first year students have actually drawn or created on those installations. I do know there will be people there that could answer that question. So I'll park that till tomorrow and see if someone responds. <laughs> All right. If people want to see more and find out more, Claire, how, how can they do so? Um, there's actually a Facebook group for Culture Ireland and they're... There's a there's a booklet for Culture Culture Ireland as well. We have it here, and it has all the details about uh, the walk in Clonmel and in Carrigan Shore. Very good mm -hmm. indeed. You were also telling me that Mental Health Ireland will be coming on board. Uh, yeah, Bernie, mid is that right? middle of October, standard campaign, and we hope that some of the shoe thoughts that we get tomorrow and throughout the rest of this week are going to be able to be folded into their campaign. It's a very worthwhile campaign. Very good indeed. All right. You have your new students uh, on campus at this point, mm -hmm. or do you? Yeah. So um, you're looking forward to, to a new uh, semester, I suppose. What, uh, what d Does that bring a bit of trepidation every year, or do you look forward to it, or what? No, it's, well, it's, uh, I guess this is a question for Claire more than anything else, because, I mean, new students create demand on bed sets. They, um, we're, we're growing all the time as a campus mm. there. So it's demand on facilities, the seats you have available in the library and stuff like that. It is good to know that the, the demand is there. It's good to know there are creative students from around the world who are coming to this campus in Clonmel. It's all part of what, there's a the URL creativecorridor.ie that envisages this county being part of a creative hub of activity in the future. And, and we're part of it. Those very, students are part of it. Very interesting indeed. What's, what's the atmosphere like in September uh, on campus, Claire? 
Um, September is, you know, when there's the most students because, mm. like, they start to dwindle then after, but uh, September is like all the classrooms are always full you know you can never find space the, the canteen is always you know <laughs> you, you sometimes you just have to stand because the amount yeah. of space that's in there you think there's enough but there never is right but there's always a buzz happening yeah, around oh, the there's place, always it? people everywhere all right mm. all right listen it's always a pleasure to meet you uh, both and thanks thanks very much indeed bernie and thanks to claire as well and well done to you on what is a, a very novel idea <laughs>